So hi guys and welcome to today's class. Uh, last week we introduced the concept of normal distribution. So this week we shall be looking at the application. But before we start looking at the application, I want us to revisit the exercise that I gave you last week. And these were the questions uh, which I want us to go through very fast. So we shall be using this kind of tables. And as I've mentioned, the values that are given inside the tables here, all these numbers here, are areas from zero to a given point in, to a given value of Z, to a given value in Z. For instance, if your Z here is one, if your Z here is one, then you're talking about this area like that. So you will come to your table here and get that area. This is the area or the probability point. Let me make it a little bit bigger. 0.3413 and so on and so forth. So that is the area from the center to a given point on the positive axis, uh, on the positive uh, on the positive side. If the number is negative, uh, the table will also give you the area from zero to that particular negative value. So for instance, if we have minus Z2 like that, the, tab the tables will give you this area from here up to there. But on the tables, of course, we'll check a positive value because of the concept of symmetry, because you know that the normal distribution is symmetrical. So let's look at uh, the exercises. Uh, question one, it is always good you have uh, this diagram. We are told to find the probability that Z is less than 0 0.01. So if I say this is 0 0.01, remember the diagrams are not drawn to scale, then the area that I'm required to find is this one all the way to minus infinity. That is the catch. I know many of you are able to find the area from zero to 0 0.01. Many of you are able to do that, okay? But now the area is from this point all the way to minus infinity. So we know that the area from minus infinity up to this point. So the area I'm going to shade in green from minus infinity, we know that area there is 0 0.5. So that one, you, you don't need to, you will not be given in your tables. So you just need to take that, you add the area from zero to 0 0.01. Zero to 0 0.01, this area here, you need that area. So that is what you add to 0 0.5 so that you can get the total area. And the shaded, this part that I've just shaded is similar to this, is similar to this. So we go to our tables and look for this number. This is our Z, 0 0.01. 0 0.01 from our tables here, uh, 0 0.01 is this number, 0 0.01. Many of you got a 0 0.004 as the answer. So you are missing the, lo the lower half. So 0 0.004, which will give us 0 0.50. And that's the answer to that question. So the probability here is 50-40, okay? In a similar way, we obtain Roman two. In a similar way, we obtain Roman two. So I'll be removing this diagram here so that I can draw the other one here. So Roman two, uh, it's always good you sketch. So here we have something like that, zero. Then we have 0 0.52. We need the area below this point, so like that. So just like we did in Roma number one, just like we did in Roma number one, uh, we shall have from zero all the way to minus infinity, we know that area is 0 0.5. So this area here, the green one there, all the way to that point, that vertical line there. You know this area here is 0 0.5. And I need to get this area from the tables. The tables will give me the remaining area, this one. The tables will give me that area. The tables will give me that area. When you come to your tables, we need, uh, remember this is a column for Z, we need 0 0.52, 0 0.5 is here, two. Point 
0.52, so that's the value. 0. That's the area, or that's the probability. So that is a 0.5 plus a, So that gives us 0.6985. Okay, do we need to do the third one? Or it will be easy to see. Now, what you need to notice about the third one is that uh, your tables are given to correct to two decimal places. So you can only evaluate this when you round it off to two decimal places. So you can work with, uh, this is the same as, uh, this is the same as 1.02. So work with 1.02, we get the value. So someone can do that very quickly and tell us the answer. So yeah, uh, so the answer is 0. Point, uh, you said 0. 8461. 8461. 84, 8461, yes. You see the same, same procedure. Then Roman number three, uh, Roman number four, we're talking about this. We're talking about this, where this is zero. Then we have a value on the lower side, minus 0. 0.51. We have a value on the upper side like that. We need the area in between there. The area in between there. So we can start with what is easier. We can find the area from, so you can partition this area into two. So we have this area from here up to that. The area above zero and the area below zero from there up to there. So this one you just check directly from the tables. You go to 1.0, pick this value. So this is 0 0.3413. Then the other value, uh, the other area will be obtained in a similar manner. Assume this value here is on the positive side. Assume this value is on the positive side. So as you're using the symmetry property, then uh, so you come to 0 0.51, 0 0.51. So that's the area. So this is 0 0.1954. Uh, uh, so we need total area, total area, which is total probability. So 0 0.1950 plus Three, four, one, thirteen. So that gives us point five three six three approximately. So that's how you use tables to obtain different values. Okay. Uh, I can quickly change the questions. Uh, let me change the questions as follows. So let's look at the other extra questions. Uh, these three other questions. So starting with the Roman one, probably that Z is bigger than 2.13. And we also have Roman two, probably that Z is less than minus 0.98. Then we have Roman three, probably that Z is bigger than minus 2.8, but less than minus 0.8. So let's start with the first one. Uh, the first one, the sketch will look like this. So this is zero. Then I have 2.3, 2.13 up there. But my objective is the area on the upper side greater than, greater than like that. Okay. Good to remember that <coughs> your tables will give you the areas, your tables will give you the areas from zero to this point. Your tables will give you the area from zero to 2.3. So if you want to get the area from this line here to this line here, you just go to your tables, 2.13. So 2.13, 2.1 is here, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 0.4834, 0 0.4834. So the area from zero to this point is 0 0.4834, but that's not the area we're looking for we are looking for the shaded area. We are looking for the shaded area. And from the properties of the normal distribution, we know that the area from zero all the way to plus infinity, the cumulative area from zero all the way to plus infinity 
is half, is half. So if we know that, and we know the area from zero to this point, then it is possible for us to know the area from 2.13 all the way to infinity. So this area here is given by 0 0.5 minus this area here, 0 0.4834. Zero zero. You get point? Zero point zero one six six. Yes, like that. Okay. Then in a similar manner, we can obtain Roman two. Roman two. Uh, let me sketch here. So we have a. Uh, uh, minus 0 0.98, we're talking about less than. So less than means below here, below. So as I said earlier, uh, your tables will give you the area from zero up to minus 0 0.98. So using symmetry, the area from zero to minus 0 0.98 is the same as Mandaje. Sorry about that. Uh, I think there was a problem with the internet. So the area from uh, from zero to 0 0.98 will be this value 0 0.3365. So this is 0 0.3365. And that's not the area we're looking for. We're looking for the area below that. So uh, we so to get the shaded area, this one here will take again 0 0.5 which is the cumulative area from minus infinity to, uh, to the mean point or to, to zero minus 0 0.3365, which gives us how much? 0 0.1635. Yes. And so on and so forth. So uh, finally, let's have Roman three. Let's have Roman three. So as we said, the sketch is very important. It's always good you have the sketch with you. It will help demystify so many things. So we have minus 2.8, then we have minus 0 0.8. So we have two points like that. We need the probability that Z is between those two points. Okay. So uh, from the tables, we'll get the area So from the tables, we'll get the area from, let me extend this line like this. We, we'll get the area from there up to there. Using symmetry, we use 0 0.8. Huh? 0 0.8, which is uh, 0 0.2881. So this is 0 0.2881, from zero all the way to this point. Then we're also able to get the area from zero all the way to this point. Again, using symmetry, we work with 2.8. So 2.8 will give us this area here, 0.4974. So this is 0 0.4974. That's the area, the area from here all the way up to that point. And you know the area from here up to there. So the shaded part will be given by the difference between those two areas. So this will be given by uh, 0 0.4974 minus 0 0.2881 minus 0 0.2881 uh, which gives us uh, 0 0.2093 okay. so basically that's how you use the the standard normal tables to obtain a uh, different probabilities. Okay, any question there? So next we look at uh, the general normal probabilities and we start by 
saying, uh, let the continuous variable, let the continuous variable x have a normal distribution, have a normal distribution with mean, uh, with mean equal to mu and standard deviation equal to sigma. So we are saying this, uh, more mathematically, we are saying that you let x have a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation like that. Sometimes we use variance there. Okay, so that's a mathematical denotation of that statement. Okay, then the probability, the probability that x is bigger than some value x1 and less than some other value x2 is given by the area under curve. I think we mentioned this area under curve, area under the curve, uh, area under the curve uh, between the ordinates, between the ordinates uh, phi of x1 and phi of x2. We'll not be using such a statement. So we'll be saying that this is equivalent to we'll be switching now from the normal distribution to a standard normal distribution, okay? So this is equivalent to the probability that Z is bigger than a Z1 less than a Z2. So this is what we are saying, yeah? that X1 less than X less than some X2 is equal to that. This is a P, yeah? So we have that. So where, where uh, Z1 is given by X1 minus mu divided by sigma and Z2 is given by X2 minus mu over sigma. So we'll be switching from X to Z using that simple illustration, using that. So from here, now we'll be using tables. Huh? So here the probabilities will be obtained using tables. So obtain using the standard normal tables. So it means that we shall be looking at uh, probabilities similar to the ones that we've just solved here. For instance, something like this. We'll be dealing with something like that. And we have seen that the probability can be easily obtained uh, using the standard normal tables. For instance, for instance, let X have a normal distribution with mean equal to, with mean equal to 15 and standard deviation and sigma is equal to five then uh, we can find uh, the standardized value, the standardized value of X is, uh, let's pick a value of X like uh, 22.5. We say is given by, given by, so the standardized value of this value of X here is given by Z is, uh, we're using this formula, remember, x minus mu over sigma. So in this case, this would be 22.5 minus 15 over 5, which is 1.5. So that is the standardized value of this for if x is uh, normally distributed with those parameters. Okay. Now let's go to the application now. We'll be using those general probabilities to solve some problems here. 
applications we're going to have uh, examples so let's have example one So let's look at this example. We're saying that a farm of stock brokers will on the average handle uh, 2,500 shares in a given day with a standard deviation of 250 shares. If the number of shares sold is normally distributed, we say that this statement here is very important, normally distributed, they, they assume the distribution. Huh? Uh, then answer the following question questions. Number one, you find the probability that more than 2,700 shares are sold in a given day. Probably that less than 1,900 shares are sold in a given day. The probability that between between uh, 2,300 and 2,550 shares are uh, sold in a given day. And finally, the probability that either more than that 125 or less than 2,000 shares are sold in a given day. Okay, so this part is very important. Now, solution, uh, solution, it's always good that you, you define your variable of interest. So solution, you can say let X be the number of shares. In a given day. So that's our variable of interest. And we have been told that X has a normal distribution or X is normally distributed. X is normally distributed. With mu is equal to, what is the mean of X? We are told from the question that the mean uh, on the average, that this is the mean. On the average, we uh, this company can sell 2,500 shares and standard deviation equal to 250. Is it? Yeah, 250. So in short, in short, we are saying that X has a normal distribution with mean equal to that and sigma, uh, this is 250, yeah? and sigma equal to 250. In most of the cases, this one is given as variance. So you need to square. Uh, that, but for now, that's why I put the symbols there so that there's no confusion. So once you have these two, uh, once you have this uh, uh, distribution well defined, now you can go to the questions. Question one: We need probability that the number of shares sold. Find the probability that more than two thousand seven hundred shares are sold. So we are talking about probability that X is bigger than two thousand seven hundred. And we said that using the general formula that we defined up there, this is equivalent to probability that Z is bigger than some value that we have to calculate. Some value that we need to calculate and put here. So the standardized value is Z is equal to, remember we're using that formula, sorry, we're using this formula. In this case, this is your X, so this is 2700 and our mu is and 500 divided by 250. Which gives us 0 0.8. So it means that here we're talking about probability that Z is bigger than so this is what we're talking about. So now we are switching from here to here. So here we just need to use tables to obtain the required probabilities, to obtain the required probabilities. So uh, as we said, the sketch is always very good. This is what we are talking about. And we have 0 0.8. I'm talking about the area above. Area above. So your tables will give you the area from zero all the way to 0 0.8. And the value is, so you go back to your tables. Okay. 
zero point eight. This is the value here. Point two eight eight one. So this is 0.2881. So the area from zero to this point is given by that. We know the area from zero all the way to plus infinity is 0 0.5. So this required area here will be given by 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2881. which is equivalent to 0 0.2119. So the required probability here, you can just come here and say 2119. Okay, so we move, uh, we move to Roman number two. And here we're talking about the probability that the number of shares sold is less than 1900. So this is equivalent to probably that Z is less than some value which we need to calculate. And the value we need to calculate is Z X minus mu over sigma. So this is 1900 minus 2500 divided by 250. which is minus 2.4. So that means we are looking for Z is less than minus 2.4 there. So we can sketch the distribution here. And here we have minus 2.4. We're talking about the area below less there. So from your tables, and again using the, the property of symmetry, you'll get the area from zero to 2.4. So if you go to 2.4, the area there is uh, Point four. There is point four nine one eight. Point four nine one eight. So that's what we put here. This is point four nine one eight. The area from zero up to this point. So we know the remaining area here will be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4918. Which is a very small value, 0 0.0082. 0 0.0082. Okay. Then let's go to Roman number three. So Roman three, we are looking for the probability that X is greater than 2300 and less than 2550, which is given by this statement here, where Z1 can be defined by this and Z2 can be defined by that. So when we simplify that, we'll get 2300 minus So this is minus 0 0.8. And then on the other side, we have 0 0.2. 0 0.2, eh? Yes. So we are talking about, so this statement here is the same as probability that here we have minus 0 0.8. Then we have that. That's what we are looking for. Yeah? Then uh, a sketch will always add value. So we have this. One value is on the negative side. The other one is on the positive side. We need the area in between there. 
within the area in between. So uh, your tables will give you the area from zero to point two. So that you can obtain from here up to point two. So this is the area. Point zero seven nine three. Zero. Then your tables will also will also give you the areas <coughs> the areas from zero to minus point eight. So using symmetry, we assume that we are looking for the area from zero to plus point eight. Using symmetry, so plus point eight is here. Yeah. Point. Uh, 0 0.2881, 0 0.2881, so this is 0 0.2881. We need the total area there, so we are going to add. So the required area here will be 0 0.3674. 0 0.36? 74. Like that, huh? Yes. Thank you. All right, then uh, let's look at Roma number four. And question number four is slightly different from what we've observed. We're looking for probability that uh, we are selling either, either more than that 125 or less than or less than 2,000 shares. So this is what we're talking about. X is either greater than that 125 or X is less than 2,000. Notice that I was forced to use or here. But this is the same as probability that X is bigger than that 125 plus probability that X is less than 2,000. Maybe a sketch of that will be will make it easy to see what is happening. So we're talking about if you go back to x, huh? so if this is x and this is the mean, which is uh 2500, we're talking about less than 2000 and more than that 125. So we're talking about the area above there that is more than that 125 or below there. So this question is uh different from the one we solved in Roman 3 in that aspect. So uh, this one will be obtained uh, using an equivalent statement of Z. So this is Z is uh, greater than some Z1 plus probability that Z is less than some Z2. Where Z1 in this case will be that 125 minus 2500 divided by 250. Then uh, Z2 will be 2000 minus 2500 divided by 250. So thank you. Those are the values of Z1 and Z2. Uh, that is uh, 2.5 and minus 2.0 respectively. So the sketch will always add value. So let's sketch this. This is zero. We can have our minus 2.0 is here. And then we have our 2.5 is up there. So we're looking for the area bigger than that, less than that. Okay. So using the tables, we'll get the area from zero, uh, zero to this point. Then you also get the area from zero to this other point here. So let's do that. Zero to 2.5, the area is, you can check from your tables huh? and let me know. Oh, 0.4938. Yes, 0.498 something. Yeah? So this is a uh, 0.49885. 
38 and then uh, let's get the area from 0 to 2.0 0 0.4772 77 2 so this is the area in between there we're looking for the area outside there so the shaded area is the total area which is 1 minus 0 0.4772 plus 0.4938 is the total area which is 1 this is total area minus the unshaded part or the area of the unshaded part so let's evaluate that so we're saying the value is 0. 029. 029. Okay. That is it. Okay. And that marks the end of that uh, example. I want us to have a look at uh, another example. So here is our example too. We are told that a set of final exam grades in a certain course is normally distributed with mean of 73 and standard deviation of 8.2. You are required to find the probability that, and we are, so, we are assuming that they are normally distributed. Eh? Yeah, the, uh, the marks, the exam grades or the exam marks are normally distributed with mean of 73 and standard deviation of 8.2. We need to find the probability that a student scored more than 90% in that particular exam. We also need to find the probability that a student scored between 65% and, sorry about that you find the probability that a student scored uh, between 65% and 89% and finally you are told if 15% of the students failed in that particular exam that is they scored grade E the question is what was the pass mark in that particular test okay so a uh, solution solution you let x be the number of marks scored in that test number of marks scored in that test or the marks scored in that particular test and we are told to assume that assume that x has a normal distribution with mean equal to uh, what is the value of mean here? 73. With mean equal to 73, and standard deviation equal to 8.2. Standard deviation. Then we can go to number one. We need probability that someone scored more than 91%. So this is the same as probability that Z is bigger than some value, which you need to obtain. So that value is the Z statistic or Z calculated or the standardized value, which is equal to X, which is 91 minus mu, which is 73 divided by 8.2. So we get the value is uh, 2.19. Five. We can say approximately 2.20 because our tables are rounded off to two decimal places. We don't need the many decimals. Huh? So we're talking about probability that Z is bigger than 2.20. So when you sketch the distribution here, this is 2.20. We're talking about greater than. So we're talking about the area above there area above there then uh, we can use our tables to obtain that area somebody to unmute themselves and let me know the area obtained so 
the area required there is uh, that smoke value 0 0.0139. Then uh, we can do number two in a similar manner. So please attempt number two and send me uh, the final answer. We need probability that uh, X is bigger than 65 but less than 89. Five and eighty-nine. So let's get the corresponding Z statistics here. Uh, some Z one here less than some Z two. And let's get the. Uh, let somebody give me the final answer, the required probability. So for Roman two, this is what uh, some of you have told me. So the answer is point eight one zero nine. Roman three, uh, we are looking for the pass mark. We're looking for the pass mark. And this is how you, you need to think about it. Uh, that's your X. So we have, so we are told that 15% uh, of the students scored less than, uh, scored uh, a grade E or they failed in the exam. So here, this is your mean, which is 73. So, and we know from minus infinity or from zero marks all the way to the mean point, uh, we have 50%. So we know that is 50% of the, of the students. So we talk about 15%, uh, 15% must be less. So it must be somewhere here. So this is 15%, which is the same as 0 0.15. So this is the area 0 0.15. So the shaded part here is 0 0.15. And the remaining area here is zero point. Point uh, five minus point one five uh, is point uh, point three five. So we know this area here. So if you know that area, it means that when you switch, you can switch to the standard normal. You can switch to the standard normal where this is zero. And then once you mark this as 15% uh, or 0 0.15 and 0 0.35, it is possible for you to get a value here. This is the grade E, this is the, the grade E, that's where it starts. So that's the value we need to get there. So use, using this information, uh, I want you to play around with the formula that we have used for Z to get the pass mark to get the pass mark. Let me give you one or two minutes to finish that. So in this question, we are looking for, uh, we are looking for a Z. If we are given the area is 0.35. And from the tables, we notice that uh, the value of Z, which gives us an area very close to 0 0.35 is the value 1.04. But because 15% is below the 50% mark, is below 50% or half of the distribution, then we have to put this guy here to be negative. So the Z value here must be negative because grade E here is below the, is below the, the mean mark. So that means it's on the negative side. Then using this formula here, uh, we can substitute for the given values. Minus 1.04 is equal to, this is my grade E cutoff point minus the mean, which is 73, divided by 8.2. When you simplify that, you will get that E is equal to, so when you simplify that, you'll get the pass mark is 64.472. So that was the pass mark in this particular example. So I want you to attempt the example two in the class notes. I want you to attempt example two in the class notes. Then we can share the answers in our next class. So that marks the end of today's class. Uh, let me know if there's a question. If there's no question, let's meet next week. Thank you.